born? I was born in Santa Barbara, and most of my life has been spent in Santa Barbara, all the local schools, and uh, I used to spend some time, I always liked music. Uh, if anyone was playing the guitar or violin, I was always attracted to that sort of thing. But yeah. how, how, did, how did it start for you? I had a, uh, a cousin who played the piano, and he had a cousin who played the piano, and I used to hear them, and I started imitating them before I even had lessons, and not advanced. How old were you then? I was probably about 10, 11 years old. I never had access to a piano, mm. and so uh, when my parents saw my interest in music, they contacted the local piano teacher who had taught in this family for two or three generations. And she said that I advanced rather quickly. So my mm -hmm. parents knew that I had talent and I was able to play by ear without the music I could, uh, songs that I'd heard. I was able to do that. So I didn't practice eight hours a day, but I did practice a reasonable amount. So I advanced rather quickly. And I think I discovered that people liked listening to me. And so it went on from there. And uh, you said uh, you didn't have access to piano when you started. Yes. Or what happened after? There was a time after the Second World War it was very difficult to find living quarters in Santa Barbara, so we had to move to Goleta. But I used to come, I had an aunt in Santa Barbara who owned a piano. So I used to come every weekend. I would have a piano lesson on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I would practice one hour before my piano lesson. And then I went back, back to Goleta where I had no instrument, so I only had one hour to practice. Oh, yes, but every week. Every week. Persistent. Every week. And then what happened after that? How did you move well, to things, being a professional? Well, once I got into school and uh, people started to listen to me more, I became very involved in the, the choir, accompanist for the choir, and accompanying singers, and it, it just grew without any effort really on my part. And later on in high school, uh, which was probably the most important part musically for me, I was very involved in, the, in all the music that was in school, the uh, musicals and the spring concerts and accompanying singers. And then I became involved with the recreation center, at that time had a youth band, and we had what they called a rec review. And we used to take, uh, we were teenagers, we would go to Camp Cook, which still exists to some degree, and we used to entertain the servicemen at Camp Cook, Camp Roberts, Camp San Luis Obispo. So then I realized that I was able to entertain. And I, I should admit that through this time, things happened to me that I had no control over. I didn't know what I was gonna do for an occupation, but I found out, for instance, I got a call from a ballet teacher in Santa Barbara who needed an accompanist. Mm -hmm. I got a call from a Spanish dance teacher who needed an accompanist. Mm -hmm. And then I got a call to play with a, a dance group at the El Paseo restaurant. I wasn't 21 yet. And one thing led to another, to another, to another. And then I accompanied the Spanish dancers at the El Paseo at Fiesta Time. And I also accompanied the Spanish dancers at the County Bowl. At Fiesta oh. time, we had a Fiesta mm -hmm. extravaganza. Yeah. But like I say, all of these things happen to me without any it, control. It is, it's Absolutely. like the doors open exactly. for you. Uh, the universe wanted you to be a professional yes, pianist. I'm, I'm ashamed to say that in my life, I've only had to actually go out and look for a job two or three times. The uh, music, has always been fun for me. Uh, I remember when I was in high school one day, one of my music teachers called me in, a wonderful, wonderful teacher, by the way, and uh, she said to me, Gilbert, they used to call me Gilbert. Gil is my professional name, and my <laughs> everlasting name. But she said, Gilbert, you're getting a B in this class when you should be getting an A. And I responded to her, the only thing that I can tell you in my defense is that music has got to be fun for me. I don't want it to be a chore, and I, I, I do work at it, but it's not all work for me. And so I have to have fun while I'm doing it, and I have to admit 
that these 65 years, I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> Shame to say that in my life, I've only had to actually go out and look for a job two or three times. All of these things happened to me. Uh, I learned to play the organ in a skating rink. There used to be a, a roller skating rink in Santa Barbara. And uh, I just happened to hear the music. I went inside and I asked, do you have an organ in here? He said, well, we just brought an organ in last week. Wow. He said, do you play the organ? And I said, a little. He said, well, if you, if you play, learn to play the organ here, you'll have a job here. <laughs> so I became a Spanish dance accompanist. I became a ballet accompanist. I was accompanying singers. And suddenly I became a roller skating rink organist. Oh. How, old, different styles. how old were you then? I was uh, 16, 17, and 18, 19. I had my 21st birthday at the El Paseo restaurant. You were playing there? Yes. And at the same time, I called up the television station one day and said, do they have an accompanist up there? And they said, no. So they invited me up there. And I say up there because it was up on the hill. Uh, I accompanied the mistress of ceremonies who was just starting a new television show. So then she asked me to come up several days a week. And then uh, I had to stop because of various union forces. But a year later when they had a budget to hire me, they called me back and I became the musical director. And so I used to accompany singers and dancers and play solos. Mm -hmm. And then they added a children's cartoon show with an artist drawing for the children. And I also started to play for that show. So uh, at the local television station, over a period of time, I probably played about eight or nine different shows. Oh, wow. Uh, which station was that? That was KYT Channel 3. Uh, ABC, the, the, the local ABC, ABC yes, the local channel ABC in Santa Barbara. Affiliate, and they went on the air in 1953. And that's approximately the time that I started up there. So young. Very, very young. And you were doing all these other jobs? I was playing for fashion shows. I was playing for cocktail parties. They approached me about playing in the lounge. So I never, I never played in a lounge solo. But I had great success for nine months until I got a contract with the United States government to join the army. What did you do when you were at KYT at Channel 3? Uh, for the time that I spent there, like I said earlier, all these things just happened to me. I was sort of learning on the job. So it made it very interesting for me. But when I was at the television station, it all started out, there was a uh, sort of a public interest show where they interviewed people locally. Uh, they went on the air at Fiesta time, so we had many Fiesta acts. And I used to play for singers or dancers who were auditioning to appear there. And I used to play solos. And to show you one of the things that used to happen to me that made me learn fast. If we had two or three scheduled to appear, singers and dancers, and if they didn't show, that meant I had three or four more solos to play because we had the hour show yes. and we had to fill it in. So when I went up to work that day, I didn't know if I was gonna play one solo or six. And it was all at the last minute. And uh, I always have to tell this little story. The engineers used to kid me because they'd say, Q Gill, Q Gill, <laughs> when they needed music, Q Gill. And one day I remember one of the engineers got flustered and he said, kill you, kill you. <laughs> but they used to cue me and I'd, I'd start out a solo, they'd say, you have two minutes. So my solos had to be two minutes. Uh, if someone didn't show up, my solo might have to be five minutes. So I had to, I had to be prepared to play a solo that either lasted one minute or five minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's something that uh, I don't know of anyone who's ever been called upon to do that sort of thing. And the engineer or the director would stand behind the camera and he would say, <laughs> or he'd say, <laughs> or he'd say, 
So I had to <laughs> improvise everything on the spot. Yes. It was either a long solo or a very short solo. That's why I got the nickname Q-Gill. Q-Gill, yes. Which yes. I preferred to <laughs> kill you. Definitely. But that was one of the things besides playing for singers every week, playing for dancers every week, playing background music for various transition scenes. Um, I even played background music for a commercial. Mm -hmm. And one day, because I was wearing a a coat and tie with a sleeve. They had a commercial where they had to pour a glass of milk. So the uh, director asked me, he said, Gil, would you pour the glass of milk? <laughs> so I went out there and adjusted my cuff. And so you see my hand pouring the glass of milk for the commercial. And that commercial. There were many, many things that happened that were I was uh, under the age of 21, but it was a whole new world. Television was new. Yes. None of those moments are on film. They're not preserved. You just have to take my word for it. You mentioned sometimes you had to improvise or do your own twists. Yes. To give a new music. Well, what happened was I became the, I didn't realize it till after I was told, I was the youngest musical director of a television station in the United States. Uh, I wasn't paid for the extra title. However, one day when I arrived at work, they said, Gil, will you fill out these forms for the music licensing of the music that we used? And the forms were quite extensive, so I, I decided, you know what? Rather than fill out these forms, I'm going to create all the music that I use, particularly for the children's show. So I used to draw inspiration from the drawings that they made that day, and all the music that I played was original, so we wouldn't have to pay royalties. Yeah, very inventive. So that gave me a, very a chance to create. Creative. Create, yes. yes. And it's sad to say, all that music is lost to the ages. I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure they <laughs> enjoyed it so very much then. But it was valuable training for me. Yes. Valuable training. Yes, yes. Uh, many years later, when I was, uh, I got a church a job as a church organist. Uh, I also started improvising on all the hymns. Original work is sort of a, a milestone for me. Yes. Because I, I make up my arrangements when I perform. They're never the same way twice. And I will vary the program during the audience, just depending on the mood of the audience. Uh, that's why music has always been fresh to me. Yeah. It's never the same way twice. Yeah, and you, you make it unique, you make it your own, for your own. Did you have the chance to play classical music anytime? Yes, uh, this also is in keeping with the wonderful things a star was looking down upon me because I also, all of my training has been classical music and I participated in classical recitals, of course, when I was in, uh, uh, at the university. And I studied with Reginald Stewart. At the, I was not a student at the academy, but I studied with the head of the, the department, uh, Reginald Stewart. And uh, so I had all that classical training, which helped me for all the, all of my popular music is influenced by my classical training. But I also had these things happen to me that I had not planned. I was a soloist with the Santa Barbara Symphony three or four times. I did the Rhapsody in Blue. Another time I did a, a Rock Bonner Out Piano Concerto. And I was a sol soloist also with the uh, City College Symphony. Also, they called me. These were all calls that just sort of landed in my lap, which I was, they featured me the whole evening with Rosas. And Roses were on all the tables. And uh, I also did a solo concert at the Libero Theater. Through the, through the years, I've tried to include some classical music in all of my uh, popular uh, renditions. And anyone that listens to me knows, uh, I think of the piano as a complete orchestra. I use all 88 keys on the piano. If the piano has 98 keys, and there is a piano that has 98 keys, I use 98 keys. <laughs> Uh, one of my pet peeves <laughs> is 
the piano has all these keys, and I hear so many pianists that just use the middle. <laughs> they don't use the top or the bottom. Right. For me, it's very important. So I think of the piano, when you hear me play the piano, you're listening to the strings, you might hear the bassoon, you're hearing the drums, you're hearing the string bass, you might hear a French horn. It's all in my mind when I'm creating. The whole orchestra. Yes. your wife, Susan, uh, studied together in college at UCSB, yes. but didn't meet there. No. How did you meet? Uh, well, she was doing, she knew who I was at, at UCSB because I had a lot of visibility for the things that I was playing for. But when I was playing the fashion shows at the El Paseo, she did some modeling. And one day I got this idea, I thought, I'm gonna ask her to join me for lunch after the fashion show. So uh, we went out a few times, and uh, that was about it. And later on, we reconnected again. And to make a long story short, uh, I was invited here to one of the functions, one of the Fiesta functions here at Rockwood. At the Santa Barbara Women's Club, yes, where Barbara we Women's are Club. right now. Yes. That's why this place is so special to me also. and. Uh, I asked her to come here and join me for the, for the party. And she was working for a veterinarian at the time, and I had a cute little dog, so we had contact <laughs> through the veterinarian's office, and I invited her to a dog show. And I enjoyed her company so much that I asked her out the following week, and the following week, and the following week, <laughs> and went on from there. <laughs> I'm usually very slow. <laughs> And that was the love of your life. Yes. The piece you were uh, playing before, you wrote for Susan. Yes, the, uh, the first piece that I played uh, is the only uh, composition that I've ever actually composed. Uh, I got an idea for it one day when she was working on an art project, and uh, I was able to see her from the piano where I was practicing. I could see where she was at the desk. And I got this idea for a theme, and I expanded on it, and one day I surprised her with it. I said, this is called Sketches of Susan. Oh. <laughs> Some years later, I made a recording of it, and somebody heard it and said, do you mind if I choreograph a ballet to it? So they choreographed a short ballet to it. Nice. So aside nice. from that, this will be one of the premier performances of it. Uh, for a certain time to Oxnard, yes, that, there? Uh, I had been playing in Montecito as part owner of a restaurant for many years, but I decided I didn't want to be an owner of a restaurant that is a whole new field. It requires a whole different lifestyle. So I sold my portion to my partner and I stayed working for him. Uh, and then Santa Barbara didn't offer enough of a change for me. Santa Barbara now is a year-round destination. At that time, we only had the summer season when we had the tourists, and the rest of the time we did have regulars. So one day these people came into the uh, Olive Mill Bistro, and they approached me and said, would you be interested in, in moving to Oxnard? And I didn't know much. I'd never spent much time down there, but they said, we are building a beautiful, new restaurant. It had not been built yet. They said, we'd like to show you the plans. So in the following days, I drove down to Oxnard, saw the plans for this beautiful, beautiful restaurant. Uh, they asked me what I expected to receive to move down there, relocate. So they complied and my wife and I decided on an adventure. So we moved to Oxnard. Uh, for a short time leaving Santa Barbara, but we were there much longer than we expected to be. Yes. But once I retired, we wanted to return home to Santa Barbara. So we've been back here and back Santa now. Barbara will always be home. I'm retired, but not retired. <laughs> I still get calls. Uh, I still want to play at my leisure. I still enjoy it, but not too much. 
<laughs> not too much. Not too long. Just, just enough. I still practice. Uh, I still play on a regular basis at home. I am very honored that people remember, remember me from the days when I played in Montecito and many other functions that I had participated in through the years. Uh, that's a long time. My career has lasted uh, about 65 years, which is rare for a musician. That, that's Very great, rare. great. I've enjoyed every minute of it. And your audiences definitely enjoy hearing your music. And that, that I, pleases me. I know me. for sure my friends here there at is the still Santa an Barbara audience, and that makes me very, Women's Club, very happy. we enjoy it every time. And you, you're here at least once a year, if not twice a yes. year. Thank you for yes. that. And you bring us music from so many generations. Yes. From the 60s, the 70s, this all gives through me these days. Great pleasure because uh, the music that I play, the music that I loved was re really from the early 1900s. I had an affinity for it. Uh, the music of the operetta before uh, musicals as we know them. Uh, I loved all the musicals. I loved the motion picture music the great orchestral works background for motion pictures, many things that don't exist now, the big scores, huge orchestras. Uh, the music that I play represents an era which is not, not in favor today, except for the more mature, more mature people. Yes. And uh, the music that I, that I love and enjoy and improvise on all represents what I call the golden age. And of course, all the great composers, George Gershwin, Rogers and Hart, Hammerstein, Jerome Kern, too many to mention, but that is, that's where my heart is, my soul. You have to like people. Your audience adores you. They love your music. They're excited. And that's very uh, gratifying to me. Uh, yes. That's a reward in itself. Uh, when my wife and I are dining out or even shopping, someone will walk up to me. I, I always think it's funny because one gentleman approached me and said, didn't you used to be Gil Rosas? And I thought, well, I, think, <laughs> I, I, was think, yesterday, I think I still am. Not today. <laughs> but I'm very honored and gratified that people still approach me and say, we, uh, we courted to your music. Uh, I took my wife to hear you. The, uh, even the, the grandparents, uh, the grandchildren had heard of me. And so that it's a wonderful, warm feeling to know that you've had that impact. Uh, people will come up to me and say, you played for my wedding, you played for my bar mitzvah, you played for my reception. Uh, those are things you don't think about when you're doing them, that they do have an impact yeah. uh, on people's lives. And I like to think of it that way. Yeah. And I think because you made them feel well, feel happy. Yes. And enjoy those moments. Precisely. Those moments that should be the through, purpose of music. Through your music. To br bring back wonderful memories, to make a person feel good, not sad. Yes. Or sometimes they want to feel sad. You can help them along a little bit. There are many emotions in music uh, that I was able to provide that made it well worthwhile, aside from the paycheck. It wasn't always the greatest paycheck, but uh, many occasions, the reward is the work itself. Much, Gil, for being with us. It's been a pleasure and an honor, and thank you for the beautiful music over the years and now and for many, many more years to come. Well, thank you, and the best way that I can say it, of course, is uh, with a song in my heart, my theme song, to tell my audience thank you for everything, with a song in my heart, and thank you for making these years wonderful and a lot of fun. Mm -hmm.